Hey friends, greetings from the Golan Heights. Coming to you from an old Syrian summer house here in the Golan that was taken in 1967 during the Six Day War. Just across the street from here, we as of yesterday began demolition and construction on a new facility here in the Golan Heights, our Golan Heights Legacy Center. We're excited to share more details about that. I want to take a minute and, and share briefly about why the Golan Heights is significant to us in terms of the Israeli history here. Because the Legacy Center, there's going to be a bunch of dynamics to this issue of legacy and what the word means and the legacy of the past, the legacy that's going to be forged in the future. But I want to take a moment and just talk about the legacy of the Israeli Defense Force and securing the Golan Heights. Because, you know, up until 1967, the, this land here was part of Syria proper. In fact, the building that we're building the Legacy Center on is formerly a Syrian military base, Syrian military installation. It was actually an officer's quarters. Up until 1967, it belonged to Syria. In 67, the Israelis took this. Now, a lot of the international community has said since 1967 until now that it's an illegal occupation. That the you know these aggressive Zionists have moved in and taken the land and have you know uh, occupied it and are stealing the land. And I want to share a few thoughts on that and why what's in our head and our hearts related to this issue of. Uh, Israeli Jewish presence in the Golan Heights. Today, the Golan Heights, a small but very significant consequential plateau, is about 48,000 people in total. Half of them are Jewish Israelis, half of them are Druze. The Druze are former Syrians that were living here during the Syrian time and who are now here once Israel took the Golan Heights. A couple things to bear in mind about the Golan Heights. Number one, this is where Moses first entered the land in Deuteronomy. He came over into Bashan. He came, they, I mean, this is significant. Moses entered the Promised Land for the first time through the Golan Heights. It was part of the tribal allotment. And since that time, up until the first century in the time of Jesus and the Apostles, there was Jewish presence in the Golan Heights all throughout that period of history. Now, in the first century, after the time of Jesus and the Apostles, in the Golan was actually a very significant military campaign in a place called Gamla, which became the beginning of a long military campaign that ended with the fall of Jerusalem and then eventually the fall of Masada as well. In fact, Gamla is referred to as the, the Masada of the Golan. And the Golan became this strategic security buffer in the first century and remains a strategic security buffer now. And that's why in 1967 that Moshe Dayan, the general who actually took the Golan, led the campaign, was against taking it when it happened. He didn't even want to take the Golan, but on the last day of the Six Day War, they decided to take the Golan because of its strategic military value. And since then, nothing has really happened up here. It's been a very quiet part of Israel until between 1973 and then the outbreak of the Syrian Revolution. And that's the other point that I wanted to emphasize about the Golan, is that up until between 1973, when the Syrian regime tried to take back to really to destroy the state of Israel and eradicate the Jewish people in conjunction with a larger scale military campaign that ultimately failed but caught, took a heavy toll on the state of Israel and the Israeli Defense Force. Between 73 and March 2011, the Golan was very quiet. And every single administration from the taking of the Golan tried to give the Golan back to the Syrian regime. And there was, also, there was always this idea of a land for peace swap. We'll give it back if there's the idea of peace. Because up here now is nothing but military bases and wineries and 48,000 people, which is nothing. It's a tiny population. Now, what happened in March 2011, everything changed because of the Syrian revolution. When the Syrian revolution broke out, it changed everything because now the question is, who are you going to give the Golan back to? Are you going to give it back to ISIS? Are you going to give it back to Nusra? A branch of Al Qaeda? Are you going to give it back to uh, the Assad regime, who then you're giving it to Hezbollah and Iran? I mean, from a security standpoint, can Israel, can Israel give it back, and who would they give it back to? Part of our establishing the Golan Heights Legacy Center is to acknowledge and preserve the biblical legacy of the Golan Heights, 
and to preserve the military history of the Golan Heights and to acknowledge and affirm Israel's legitimate claim to the Golan Heights for her security. Because when the Golan fell in the first century, Jerusalem fell shortly after. And we believe this, that the Golan, the, the fate of Jerusalem really rests with the fate of the Golan. That's why we care about the Golan in a significant way. And it's only 66 miles of border from Mount Hermon, which I don't know if you can see it from here right now. It's right there, beautiful, all covered in snow, hiding behind the hills there. But this tiny little plateau here, 66 miles of border, Lebanon's there, Syria's there, Jordan's just over here, Israel's here. It's four countries. It's a massively significant place. And we believe that it's important for the global Christian community to acknowledge the biblical history and to acknowledge and to understand the biblical history of this place and to also understand the dynamics of the military history of this place because of the future ramifications of what's going to be happening in Israel and in the Middle East in the days to come. And I'll end with this. A few days ago, Qasem Soleimani was killed. He was the head of the IRGC, a very dangerous man. It's, you know, if you compare Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and bin Laden, the, the death of Suleimani is much more significant, much more significant. And the ramifications of what could happen are also very significant. Right now, we have multiple capitals and multiple countries dangling by a proverbial thread. You know, Beirut in Lebanon, Baghdad in Iraq, Tehran in Iran, Damascus in Syria. These countries are dangling right now by a thread of uncertainty and instability, and we don't know what the future is going to hold. We ultimately know the end of the story, but we don't know what's going to happen in the meantime. And we believe that the Golan Heights is to play a critical role in the unfolding of history in the days that come. And so what we as a spiritual family and organization are committed to in these days is acknowledging the biblical history of this place and also acknowledging the military history of what the, the blood that's been shed here, the lives that have been spent, the energy, the decades, the years of sowing into this place to establish the Golan as a, a plateau of peace and a security border. It was from here that we had the privilege of partnering with the Israeli Defense Force to provide life-saving humanitarian aid to the Syrians caught in the Syrian civil war between the rock of the Syrian regime and the hard place of the ra radical jihadist organizations that are tearing the country apart. And we have seen and experienced and participated in this is that the Israeli Defense Force, the presence here in the Golan, is a stabilizing force in the region. It's not an occupying force. It's not a land-grabbing, land-stealing, defiling force in the region. It's a stabilizing force. And we affirm Israel's right to the Golan, both biblically, militarily, in terms of security, and for the cause of peace and the preservation of human life. Because the reality is, if the Golan falls, Jerusalem falls with it. And if the Golan falls, jihad and genocide would break out across the region in ways that right now it's being restrained because of pockets of restraint throughout the Middle East. Kurdistan is a pocket of resistance to jihad and genocide. Israel is a pocket of resistance to jihad and genocide. And we believe those who love the preservation of life, who love human dignity and believe that everyone's created in the image of God should also have this mentality that we should stand with these pockets of peace that are restraining the forces of darkness and evil in our generation. The Golan Heights, I believe, is one of the most strategic and significant and consequential pieces of real estate on the earth today. And that is why we are establishing the Golan Heights Legacy Center. And every day this month during January, we're going to be sharing videos like this and articles, photos, stories to give insight and to share the backdrop to this incredible place so that the international community and the global body of Christ can connect with this. And we're also raising funds during this time to fund the establishment and the building of this legacy center that I believe is going to be a gift to the body of Christ to help steward the legacy of the Golan Heights, which is ultimately also the legacy of Jerusalem and the land of Israel altogether because the fate and the destiny of these places and these different parts of Israel, it's all connected. Blessings from the Golan Heights.